Their last possession, they had the ball. Well, second to last possession, they had the ball. We had two timeouts. And I called one right away because um, I wanted to, I wanted to give our, our kids enough time at the end of the game. I wasn't necessarily worried about the timeouts. I wanted the time. Um, because we work every Friday, we work the two-minute drill. Different scenarios. Yesterday was 57 seconds or 53 seconds, one timeout, and it was a field goal to tie. That's what it was. Um, and so, you know, we come up 57 seconds, no timeouts. And I just simply looked at Jacob. I said, make him a believer. That's what I said to him. Today? Yeah. You said what? Make, him a, make everybody a believer. That's what I said to the kid. And um, we, we got a special group of young men. I mean, um, yeah, we very easily could have, you know, just packed it in after last week. Because you're right, we got embarrassed last week. Um, and, you know, it was, it was simple as what Jacob said. We, they, they got going and we, we didn't have an answer. And we didn't do a very good job of adjusting to whatever was going on. But this week, we just talked to our guys about playing assignments on football because we didn't do that last week. We started pressing. And everybody started pressing, trying to do everybody else's job. And so I just told the kids, I said, man, I promise you. I said it to them before the game. I said, I promise you, if you do your job, everybody to a man just does their job, we'll win this game. And, you know, we come in at halftime, they had scored right before half, and so you could see some looks, and, and I said, <clears throat> just do your job. That's, and and, and it, it, it seems really simple, but that's really what it is, especially with a team like Portland State. Portland State is a big play team. If you say you watch film on them, every play they got a two, three, four big plays right. that they're just, you know, hitting on people. And we gave up one, one ginormous play, you know, on the, on the touchdown on the long touchdown pass. Um, but it's about believing in yourself. And the kids were doing that on the sideline. Make, make out the bowls is run up and down the sideline. Man, y'all got to believe. Just believe while we're in this 57 seconds and zero timeouts. And, in, you know, we – Jacob Nip, everybody wondered why I made that kid the quarterback. But just sitting over there listening to him sit right here, that's why he's our quarterback. He, he's, he's a leader. He is a leader of men. Period. That's what that kid is. And he's, he's tough as nails. Um, he's just one of those guys that you don't get, every, you don't get but a few times in your life. They got the game plan. Uh, every once in a while, I'll say take a shot here or there and something like that. But for the most part, John, John knows what he's doing. I keep telling everybody, if, if somebody dropped that kid, and I say kid, but if they dropped Boyer into an offensive, I mean into an NFL, quarterback, coach right now, he'd function and he'd function awesome. Because um, he knows what he's doing. Um, and now you, we're starting to get the people that can do what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, when he went up for the ball, I thought he was, I mean, because he had a guy inside and outside of him. I thought they were going to hit him, you know, and I don't know if they ran at each other or what, but he comes down, like you say, he has a present of mind. When he catches the ball, he didn't catch the ball and fall. No. He caught it and turned and saw, and he, and he kept running. He made a couple of people miss, and then he had enough sense to get out of bounds on top of that. Um, but he, we, we do. We just have a bunch of tough kids. And you don't think you don't normally say wide receivers, track guy, tough. But I realized that kid was tough last year when he dislocated his finger in practice, and they popped it back in and they taped it up. And then he caught a touchdown two, three plays later. He, he, yeah, we just got a we got a bunch of tough, gritty kids, and they, and they just happen to be some young kids. Um, and I'm just I'm just proud of them right now, man, because they 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 showed the heart of not letting a game that you got embarrassed in before sure. beat you the next one against the 10th-ranked team in the country. Um, yeah. You know what I've said during the year, every win's a must win. And I mean, that's, that's kind, of, kind of a crappy way to say it because every, every game is a must win. You want to get right down to it. But coming off such, such a, a crummy, crummy game, uh, and, and then and not, not only just coming off a crummy game, but to jump up 14 zip. Talk about that. Well, I mean, <clears throat> the, like I said, the kids are starting to believe in themselves first and foremost. Um, and, I mean, let's face it, Trey brings a different dynamic to our offense in the sense of if you watched after the first play of the game, we sent Trey because we wanted to know what they were doing. They're a man-to-man -man team. That's what they do. And so we motion them out, go to empty back for a set, <clears throat> and they take their linebacker and put them on Trey. And, and that's why I say he, John is smart. 
I guess you might not like all the calls that he calls, but I'm listening to this this dude on the headset, and John is like, he is lit. I mean, obviously, Jacob can't hear him, but he's like, don't go to anybody but Trey. Take Trey. Take Trey. Take Trey. Because he knows. He's got Trey on the linebacker. And he throws the ball to him down the sideline. Trey makes a great catch. You know, so he's, he's figuring out what he wants to do to them, what he can get them to do in the first 12, 15 plays. And, you know, we got him out of playing just man-to-man, 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 man-to-man. They start playing cover two and cover four. And so, um, like I said, he – we figured it out. We're able to go up a couple quick scores, and, and you know we just got to learn to play with that and keep. I mean, we've most of the games we won this year, we went up first, mm-hmm. and we've been able to hold on to that. So it was huge for us to have that lead. We go down, like I said, with 50 something seconds left, and be able to come back and win the game. To be honest, you feel a little relieved when the ball's on the two yard line. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, no question. I mean, and. Like I said, whether you're running or throwing, and I was like, we just got to have enough time. We got to get up off the ground. And what helped us, to be quite honest with you, we ran it the first time, and the kid's helmet came off. They had to stop the clock. And, you know, yeah, their guy's helmet come off. And so the referee asked me, do I want a 10-second runoff? No. Um, I'm like, you mean do I get 10 seconds back? I can put 37 seconds on the clock. He's like, no, you can take it down to 17. I was like, no. Hindsight, yeah, you probably should have. But, you know, we got to be able to hold him for 33 seconds, you know, after we scored the ball. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was because, like I said, when you got a back like Trey, I mean, you figure he's going to find a way to get in the end zone from the two-yard line. Man, we're 4-4. Four four. We've never been in this position. Right. I mean, that's one way, that's way you should look at it. Period. Too. We've never been in this position, period. And Jacob said it. Last, oh, I love the kid. I, he, he's sitting in the office watching film. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, Jacob, him and actually him and Nip both were sitting in coach one of our line coach's office watching film. And I walked into the office and I shut the door. I said, What's going on? I said, How is the locker room? And he looked me straight in my face. He says, Coach, everything is fine. He said, Coach, we got a chance to go seven and four this year. That's what the kid said to me. This is Nip. Yeah. He said, We're fine. We just gotta regroup and go back out and play football. And so, you know. Again, people say we're crazy. You put your livelihood, you know, in the hands of 18 to 22 year old kids. You just never know how they're going to be. But it's what we love. We love to see them turn into young men. And we got a bunch of young men um, that are finding their way. They're starting to believe in themselves. And we got a leader, albeit a young one, on offense. And we got an older one on defense. And they, they kind of keep it mellow with everybody. Neither one of them, you see them either get too high or too low. Um, and that's kind of what it's all about. And so, you know, we we enjoy this one for the rest of the day. We come in tomorrow, we watch it, <clears throat> and uh, we'll get to work again at 6 o'clock um, Sunday night working on North Dakota and go up there and try to get another one. Sean Leslie left the team. Everybody knows that, okay? And Sean's body just wasn't holding up for him, and his attitude wasn't right. And he, this is his words. He said, Coach, my body's not holding up. I can't do what I need to do. I give that kid so much credit for what he did. He said, Coach, I do not want to be a cancer. He said, my attitude is not right, and I can't fix it right now. He said, so the best thing for me to do is walk away. He said, I'm going to support my guys. He said, I'll be at the game, and he was. He was at, he was at the game at halftime. I saw him at halftime. He's on the rail shaking everybody's hand. The, that kid – was as much a part of this W as anybody because of how he approached that. Now, I'm not saying it was all peaches and cream, but the way he left it and what he said to me in my office, I have the highest regard for the young man and wanting not to be, he's a coach, I'm, one of, I'm, I'm an old head, I've been here before, I've seen what it can do to this team, the cancer. He said, I don't want to be that, so I'm just going to remove myself from this situation. And I, I give him, it was very mature of him to approach it like that. We knew it was going to be one of those games where our offense was going to have to score points. Because Portland State, I mean, I mean, they put 66 up on the FBS team. I mean, it wasn't a great FBS team, but they put 66 points up on them. You know, and so we knew that we were going to have to score some points and just eliminate the big explosive plays. I can preach it all day. I need your attitudes to be right. I need you to do – I can preach that all day, which I'm going to continue to preach that until I can't do it anymore. Right. They have to be the ones to change it. They have to be the one that want to change it. And like I said, we got enough 
of a balance on our on our team now. We're starting to get, you know, I always talk about the 80-10-80. I mean, the 10-80-10. The you know, you got your 10% leader, you got 80% follower, and 10% knuckleheads, as I call them. If you want to go spiritual, you got 10% shepherd, 80% sheep, and 10% wolf. And we're starting to get the 10% on top stronger than the 10% on the bottom, and the rest will follow.